Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today I would like to talk about how to creating this sun ray texture on this pair of earring for today's jewelry cat design tutorial. Are you ready? Let's get started. In this tutorial, I would like to show you how to make this sun ray pattern and then we are going to make another shoe in the back and creating those galleries so have a little bit space. You can cut out this shoe a little bit bigger so the light will go through better. And then we are going to using the cutout to the top to creating another piece so it can be dangling for this earring. As starting from scratch. First of all, you can download this stone at the description below. There's a newsletter you sign up and then you will get this stone here. Then you can come in, in to size the stone in any size that you want. I have the stone in 4 millimeter, and I will also like to arrange my other stone uh, first in order to determine how big of my earring is going to be. So first of all, I'm going to make a copy of this stone and kind of bring in like this. All right, then the next things we wanted to do to arrange the stone, we want to use the polar array snapping into the zero. And I'm guessing maybe eight of them. If it's not 100% touching, it may not be the best combination there, but I'm going to record a history first and hit enter. I would like to make the center stone a bit smaller um, so I can make the gap a little bit smaller. By doing so, I'm going to moving this guy in just a little bit. Ideally, you wanted to have the stone size ready. You may not able to size this way. I'm just trying to get the perfect looking uh, for my design here. All right, so that's it. This is the perfect looking. We also need to start making the prong. All of this point, it's going to have a prong in the middle. So this middle one is going to have a prong. Let's start making the first prong here. I'm going to come in into my top view and simply just draw something look like this. And this is the one we are going to pipe. Let's go ahead to pipe it using the pipe command. And we want it to be something about this size. Uh, ideally, I wanted to have this prong to able to cover all the side. You want to touch a little bit on all three sides there. All right. So once you find that is the right one for your prong, which is touching all three stone right there. The next thing that we wanted to do is we wanted again using a polar array snapping into the zero and we want to use the same number to get those prong here. All right, so first one is done. The second one, we can have another one just bringing down something like this. You have a choice to make either a big one right in the middle, or you can make a two small one. For example, like one is right here and the other one's right here, All right? Don't forget that if you polish this, this is it's going to be blink. And But I don't like the missing space right here. So I'm going to stay with the one big one. And again, we are going to using the polar array and to snapping into the zero. And let's say uh, we need to have an eight of them. So then we will have something like that. Okay, so now everything look okay. We can make on the bezel, but that's working on the sun ray first. Maybe we will still need to adjust this guy. Okay, so first of all, I would like to have uh, creating a really puffy square form that we want to use a round rectangle and with the conley corner. So you just right click and selecting the center, snapping into the zero right there. And depends on what size that you would like to have your sun ray to look like. And I basically want to have something look like this. I also wanted to tilt it them later, but I'm just going to stay for whatever that I have at this point. Okay, the second thing we wanted to do is creating that little triangle. So in fact, I'm going to move this into the other layer so we can just focus on that to turn off all the stone we just make. All right, so the first things I need to do is create some sort of a triangle right there. Um, depends on how many you're going to create. So let's say I'm going to snapping into the zero right here and creating one of a line. In this line, I'm going to use the polar array. And you can see I use a lot of polar array in this case. And I wanted to have, let's say the stone is 18. So to look nicer, I wanted to have something the same similar number with the stone. So that's time three. Let's try 24 and see how it goes. 
All right, it looks nice to me. So then I'm going to stop it right there. All right, the second thing is that you can see that on our perspective, we have all the line here and we need to create in the cross section. So let's go ahead to create a triangle. We can use the uh, polygon. In the polygon option, you have the number. I'm going to change to three. And then we are going to starting anywhere on our top view, something look like this. All right, it doesn't matter about the size at this point, but we just need to have one there. I might want them to go a little bit more shallower, so I'm going to moving one of the point down. All right, so now we have this. I need to have this on the top of those two points at the end of my curve right there. Okay, so the command we are going to use, you have the transform, and then you have the orient, Two point. So this guy, it's going to be transfer, and we do not need a copy, but we do need a 3D scale. So look at on the top here in the command bar. I want to change to 3D. Okay. First reference point will be here. Second, it will be here, and we are going to move it from here and also to here. All right, so now you can see that I have a perfect scenario for the sweep two. Let's try sweep two. You got rail one, rail two, cross section, and then you get all the way in like this. Perfect. And we just need to cap it and double make sure on our property right here is showing a closed solid poly surface. Let's back to the front view that we already have something like this. We just need to using polar array one more time, snapping into the zero, and we want a 24 of them, and so they will look like this. Okay, so now all of them are aligned perfectly. And all I need to do is to creating this solid. And we want to go with the solid extruded planar curve straight. All right, so all we need is something in the middle. So we are going to use the bowling split. And then we are going to pick up everybody beside this one first. That will be our cutting tool. And then we want to pick up this guy right here. So it will help us to split every single things there. Let me delete this one and show you what I mean. So we're going to delete everything over there that is outside of our object area. Going to delete a bunch of them here. All right, I may want to change this into the black color. It might be easier for you to see. All right, so now we have that sun right there. And we do need to have a little bit thickness. So I'm going to extrude it one more time. So extrude it planar curve straight. And in this guy, I just wanted to have uh, one side. And I want to have uh, something a little bit like this. All right, so let's turn on our stone and take a look on it. Look like we need to cut out something pretty big in the middle. So I'm going to use the cylinder and going to snapping into the zero. And I wanted to do something pretty big. So as I like hiding behind a stone for this circle, that would be fine. So I gonna have something look like this. And moving, make sure it's intersect. Let me turn the stone off one more time. And this time we wanna select everybody and we want to use a boolean split with this guy in the middle. So let me delete this guy. So what we have done is we are creating the separate piece. I'm going to move this piece out and group them. Those guy right here, I wanted to group it. So we got two pieces right there. And the other piece, I'm just going to move it to the top. Right, this we can put another stone right there. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out is we need to have some sort of thing called gallery and which will allow the stone, uh, if you turn on the stone, you're going to see the coolant is sticky out and you do not want it to have the metal to be too thick, right? So we wanted to create a gallery. First things that we wanted to do is I'm going to use that curve and I'm going to offset inside for about one millimeter. And with those curves, I'm simply just going to extrude it for something really thin. So let's go to the solid extruded planar curve straight and for something pretty thin there. All right. With this one, I'm going to move it out right here. 
Okay, so that will protect it the back, but for in between those two, we need to have some connection in there, right? So I'm going to making a copy of this guy right in the middle, as you can see on my top view, and to make sure they are intersect, I'm going to create something like this, just 1D scale to make them a, a bit longer. So let me change this into the red color so you know what I'm talking about. All right, so once we have this, we need to cut them out. Um, so I'm going to come into the front view, move this up a little bit, and I'm going to just creating a box, something look like this. Depends on how big of an opening you want, but I want to make sure it's aligned right in the vertical center. So use the align vertical center command and snapping into the zero right there. All right, so now we have this. I'm going to polar array one more time and number for them maybe you just want to use eight and i also want to record the history and let's take a look on it so this will be the area to hold it the two plates together but i do not want them to be too thick so that's moving them a little bit thinner so this is what we get there so let's turn off the stone and I'm also just going to moving this to other layer right there and just temporarily hide it. So we are dealing with this directly. Okay, so we need the piece, not the red one, but it's actually in between where the red one is. So let's go ahead to use the bowling split. So this red one will be split by all this eight object and we can we can delete those and now we can also delete a bunch of um the one it is in between so this will be deleted all right so this will be the area to holding the piece let's go ahead to turn on the piece and you can see they are like this okay don't forget to go back with the stone and take a look if it's any leak. If it is not, we can make under bezel there. So that's starting with the center one. We wanted to use the tube command and we want to snapping into this button of the stone and make sure that the vertex on your all snap is on. So that's snapping right there. We don't need to have this guy is too big. So I'm going to get it as close to the stone as possible. And we're going to bring in for whatever thickness that you prefer. All right. So that's creating this right here. And just need to bring it down like this. All right. So that will be the first one. The second one, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to creating the tube and snapping into the vertex. The same size with the stone coming in a little bit. And for how long we can make it the same like the one that we have over there. So in the back, there won't be too much of a deviation there. All right. So now we have this one. We just need to make eight of them by using the polar array, snapping into the zero, and we can get something like this. All right. So if that look okay to you, I will be fine. And while I'm looking at this, I realize this gap is actually not too good for the casting. So I actually want this guy to be smaller. What I did is using the gumball, holding the control and shift. And then I wanted to 2D scale coming back a, a little bit to cover the area. So then it won't be like too much exposed over there. Okay, that looks better. All right, now I have everything. I'm going to select everybody and just rotate 45 degree. It will break all the history that we have, but that's okay. We are no longer need to change it. If you are okay with that, you can have this one on the top. All you need to do is creating three jumping actually. So we wanted to use the torus and we're going to snap in right here, creating our first jumping about this size. All right. So I'm going to move this jumping up a little bit. And we need to have another one where on the top. So I'm going to making a copy by hitting the all key. This one is going to stay with this one. And we're going to have a one in the middle. And this one need to be rotated 90 degrees. So let's go ahead to rotate it something like this. So then they will be like dangling there. You could also without this one and have this one directly solder into this one. That will work too. Um, make sure they are aligned. So I'm going to bring this back here and that will be constructing for our jumpering. For the earring post, 
the post in the industry standard, we wanted to have a post, it's about 11 millimeter, because there will be something like inside of the, uh, the top of the earring. And we wanted to do is to pipe it for 0.81 millimeter, which is also 20 gauge. All right. Once you have it, a lot of the time you're going to have a little indention there. So let me show you what that means. You're going to have something about like this. And it's about one and one and a half millimeter. With this one, I'm going to use the surface tool and I'm going to use a revolve. So this is the center axis for 360 degree and we'll get something like this. All we need to do is pull in different this one out of this one. All right. So then you have that earring post. Let's go ahead to move it into the center by align vertical center command. And we want to type it zero because now everything is like a zero over there. We just need to move it up to whatever the place you want them to be. So then you can set a stone, cut a hole out the same similar way with the one that we do in the middle. And that will be the sun ray pattern for today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this video. I do have a playlist for all kind of a different earring. So if you are interested in that, check out the playlist and let me know what you think. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next.